Okay, so can you also talk to us about uh, spiritual fasting or fasting for spiritual reasons? Yeah, yeah, the classic discipline uh, all the way back to, I mean, yeah. to before Christ, but especially in the fathers and the desert fathers, the period, you know, after the apostles all passed away, uh, there was this great season of entering into fasting that has informed the rest of the church. And what we're doing is when we fast, um, we're abstaining from things or we're either entering into hunger intentionally, but also just taking certain things out of our life to, to discipline uh, our attachments and to discipline our passions, to discipline our bodies, because it's by the body that we experience creation and enter into it. Uh, as, and that's full of blessings, but also by the body, we get caught in the pleasures uh, of created existence. And we can, in the confusion that sin brings, we can become attached in a disordered way to things that are not actually satisfying to our hearts, to created goods that can't satisfy the heart created for an uncreated good, God himself. So when we fast, what we're doing is taking something out that's not necessary for our life, uh, but is nice. We're taking it out, uh, leaving it aside and letting ourselves experience the difficulty of that, um, but turning that difficulty toward the Lord and toward the cross and saying, with you, Lord, I suffer the inconvenience of this, you know, slight pain or this struggle. I offer this, I unite it to the cross, and I ask you to help me um, order my priorities again around the truth, the truth of your eternal good, and help me to not cling to created goods as though they're enough to actually satisfy me. They're a part of what satisfy me. They're meant to orient me toward the ultimate good, but so often they get in the way. Yeah. So fasting, abstinence in particular as well, little ways of taking comforts out of our diet, out of our day-to-day. -day. Right. Um, they discipline the body so that the soul within the body is able to help turn uh, by the guidance of the intellect and the will, turn the emotions and the passions toward uh, participating in the grace of God. Uh, toward the, the full um, animation by the gifts of the Holy Spirit so that we can do things that are beyond our nature. So we can act uh, according to Jesus Christ and not according to the fallen Adam that we all bear within us. So I've always, I, what's always happened for me whenever I've fasted, I feel like my prayers are very much like answered. But I, I don't, it just, it seems very powerful in a way. Yeah. It's super I it's biblical, right? There's in one of the gospels, the, the disciples are trying to, the, uh, they're trying to cast out a demon and they can't. And, and then Christ comes along and they ask him why, why he was able to cast it out and why they couldn't. And Christ's response is some demons can only be opposed by prayer and fasting. Um, and in a couple places, he says it by prayer in one of the gospels he says and fasting. And it's just an important reminder that um, evil itself loses some of its power when we fast um, because we are saying to creation, we're saying to, to creatures, I'm interested, I'm drawn to this thing, but I'm not going to go that way. Um, and that's a discipline of the soul that is a, a fundamental for our engagement with temptation in general. Like we're, we're, we're acting on a virtue that helps us say no to things that we don't need. And so as the body sort of is disciplined there and the heart becomes strong, uh, the, the virtues are fortified, um, especially the virtue of uh, fortitude itself, we are able to, to pray better or focus more clearly. Evil yeah. is its hold. And uh, we just tend to find ourselves in a, a more focused relationship with God that through some of that suffering comes entrance into communion. Because right. Christ himself went out, when he went out into the desert, he fasted, right? Uh, <laughs> he was out in the desert to be with the Father, but he's dealing with the temptations we deal with in the flesh to show us that there's a way to be victorious over them. The evil one will come and, you know, bat against our hearts in, uh, over and over again as we fast, but it will, with Christ in the Holy Spirit, strengthen us to, to be in better relationship with the Father. Wow. This is so good. <laughs> do you, <laughs> I, I save it and put it up on YouTube for that? No, no, it's great. No, is that okay? Great. Okay. And then I'll make sure I share your book as well. Um, and then can you, can we end with a, a blessing from you? For sure. For asking for that. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, we love you. We love you so much. And we know in humility that we have no idea the depth and infinite breadth of your love of us. And yet you continue to reveal it to us more fully day by day. And so please help us just to learn what it is to be attentive in spirit to your promptings, your guidance that we would recognize ever more perfectly your presence in our lives, that, uh, that with St. John and with St. Peter, we would see you and we would say, it is the Lord. 
as you act within our lives, as you guide us toward the fullness that you have for us. And we just beg you to pour out your Holy Spirit on us, everybody who's listening, everybody who will listen later. We, we just open our hearts in this moment to you, Heavenly Father. In humility, we beg you as your sons and daughters to enrich our lives with a, a fresh outpouring of grace. We beg you to stir in us a greater longing to be as you wish us to be, to, to long for heaven and to bring that desire down into our day-to-day -day lives that everything we do would be ordered around the pursuit of your most sacred heart, Lord Jesus. So please send your spirit upon us now to anoint us with every good gift from on high to cast out from us anything that is not of you, anything that, that brings darkness into the light. 